Hey everyone, welcome to this week's weekly news roundup where we bring you up to date with what's happening in the WoW PvP scene. After looking at EU's upcoming powerhouses for this year's AWC in last week's episode, let's kick things off with a look at the North American teams. North America's top teams haven't seen any changes in terms of player roster swaps, starting off with the highly promising team of Sidu, Trill, Mez, and Sam, who will be representing Asmongold's new organization OTK. This team is still the same but definitely looking stronger than ever before with Trill, a phenomenal Windwalker showing great performances as they are extremely high on the NA ladder with a comp that's definitely being slept on right now, Windwalker Frost DK. Trill has also recently won the Race to World First for Complexity Limit, surely giving him extra confidence and momentum going into the AWC. We've also seen Samiyam pick up Shadow Priest and Mez on the Arms Warrior, and this is definitely a great choice, as this allows them to play one of the best RMP counters, Warrior, Shadow Priest, with either a Resto Shaman or Holy Paladin, as we explained in our last week video. We'll be covering the meta in more detail in our upcoming 3v3 tier list, so be sure to keep an eye out for that. And to round out this top team, we've got Seedu, one of the best multi-class healers in the game that has proven himself to be a legend of the arena over and over again, finally culminating in his team's 2018 BlizzCon World Championship win. And despite his success since 2010, Seedu is still performing at the highest level with this year being no different. Altogether, OTK are a very experienced team that can definitely perform and contend for first place this season. Our second team to watch out for would be Charlotte Phoenix, who made it to the finals of last year's AWC. The team also hasn't seen any roster changes as its star player is still Jamili, one of the best mages in NA. He brings tons of tournament experience with strong performances at BlizzCon over the years. But you definitely don't want to underestimate his teammates. Burn has been a consistently great warlock. Nick is a great melee and Corlix an excellent all-around healer. As we already mentioned, this team almost won last season's AWC, but even after such a heartbreaking loss, they've still stuck together and seem more dedicated than ever before. To round out our preview of the upcoming 2021 AWC, the official World of Warcraft channel just released a video guide on how the next Arena World Championship will be structured. If you haven't seen it already, you should definitely check it out as it clears up any confusion around the format. Without a doubt, the most exciting addition to this year's format is the introduction of a second season that high performers automatically qualify for. This will give new teams a chance to prove themselves in a relegation tournament to participate among the best teams in their region throughout the second season. We definitely see this as a great change as the powerhouses that we know will already have their spots locked in the Season 2 circuit. After the Season 2 circuit has been played out, the top four teams for each region will then compete in a grand final. Overall, a pretty solid concept and we can't wait to see how it's going to play out. Hopefully you all enjoyed our preview of the upcoming AWC. But before we move on, there's just a quick little announcement that we want to make. It's been a while since we've seen our brand represented in the AWC and we're super excited to let you all know that Skillcapped EU is back on the scene, taking on last year's champions of the European AWC, Zipai, Maro, Blizzo, and their new healer, the 2017 BlizzCon champion, Asgarath as our own. Next up, we have a look at the Maw and its currency Stygia. Players have recently discovered a bug in the Maw to farm infinite Stygia, enabling them to upgrade all their conduits to 226 and get as many of the socket adding items as they like. The most abused method was by going into a cave to spawn Maw Roach Hatchlings at a rapid speed. Farming Stygia in a high capacity without triggering the Eye of the Jailer is definitely considered an exploit and will probably be reverted by Blizzard sooner or later. Even though there hasn't been a hotfix yet at the time of producing this video, this is definitely unfair and will give players an advantage as to farm Stygia at this rate is not intended. Also, it will likely result in a penalty as Stygia is connected to player power, so we highly suggest that you stay away from it if it still hasn't been fixed. Last up, we have some unexpected midweek balancing changes. But before we go into the PvP class changes, Blizzard have just enabled this year's tournament realms. So, if you've signed up for any of the AWC Cups, hop on now and test some stuff out. If you haven't signed up yet, don't worry as you can still go to gamebattles.majorleague.com, search for World of Warcraft, and sign up for Cup number 2. Alright, let's get into those hotfixes. First up, we have seen buffs to using two-handers by 2% for Frosty Ks and Windwalkers. 
This change brings the power gap between using two one-handers or a two-handed weapon closer. Next up, several medium damage buffs to each Frost Mages, Fury Warriors, and most surprisingly, Assassination Rogues. These changes won't do much for Mages as Fire will still be the go-to due to Combustion being super broken and honestly, Frost is just way too slow for the current meta, but this could change as gear levels increase and our Renown levels get higher. As for damage buffs for Fury, these will have little to no impact due to how much better Arms is as a spec. Fury brings almost no utility when compared to their Arms counterparts, and so we fully expect Arms to remain as the preferred and the go-to spec for Warriors. On the other hand, an almost 10% damage buff to Assassination Rogues could definitely change things around, or at least will make us see a few more of them in comps like the ever-popular RM Paladin and Rogue Shadow Priest. Overall though, Subtlety will probably still be the better choice for RMP, as it's better in enabling and setting up for his Fire Mage. But don't be surprised if we start to see Assassination Rogues popping up on the ladder and doing well in some of the matchups that Subtlety has been struggling in. And finally, a change to Pod Tender, which will now drop the flag in BGs and the orbs as well. Anyway, even though these small class balancing hotfixes have taken a while to appear, and we're still missing buffs to a handful of poorly performing specs in PvP, such as Mistweaver Monks and Unholy DKs, we have to give credit to Blizzard here as they've taken the approach to buff undertuned specs instead of nerfing some classes to the ground. Alright everyone, that's going to do it for this week's WoW PvP news update. Stay tuned for next week, but for now, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and let us know how you're enjoying Shadowlands Arena so far in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.